Necrotizing Fasciitis, Wikipedia Article Audio Necrotizing fasciitis, commonly known as flesh-eating disease, is an infection that results in the death of the body's soft tissue. It is a severe disease of sudden onset that spreads rapidly. Symptoms include red or purple skin in the affected area, severe pain, fever, and vomiting. The most commonly affected areas are the limbs and perineum. Signs and Symptoms Cause Risk Factors Bacteria Diagnosis Medical Imaging Scoring System Prevention Treatment Surgery other epidemiology history notable cases typically the infection enters the body through a break in the skin such as a cut or burn risk factors include poor immune function such as from diabetes or cancer obesity alcoholism intravenous drug use and peripheral vascular disease it is not typically spread between people. The disease is classified into four types, depending on the infecting organism. Between 55% and 80% of cases involve more than one type of bacteria. Methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus is involved in up to a third of cases. Medical imaging is helpful to confirm the diagnosis. Necrotizing fasciitis may be prevented with proper wound care and hand washing. It is usually treated with surgery to remove the infected tissue and intravenous antibiotics. Often a combination of antibiotics are used such as penicillin G, clindamycin, vancomycin, and gentamicin. Delays in surgery are associated with a higher risk of death. Despite high quality treatment, the risk of death is between 25% and 35%. Necrotizing fasciitis affects 0.4 to 1 person per 100,000 per year. Both sexes are affected equally. It becomes more common among older people and is very rare in children. Necrotizing fasciitis has been described at least since the time of Hippocrates. The term necroticing fasciitis first came into use in 1952. Symptoms may include fever, swelling, and complaint of excessive pain when compared to a small, benign swelling on the skin. The initial skin changes are similar to cellulitis and abscess, thus making the diagnosis of necroticing fasciitis at early stages difficult. Induration and swelling beyond the area of skin changes are commonly present in those with early necrotizing changes. The redness and swelling usually blends into surrounding normal tissues. The overlying skin may appear shiny and tense. Other signs which are more suggestive of necroticing changes are, formation of bully, skin ecchymosis which is present before skin necrosis presence of gas in tissues and reduced or absent sensation over the skin. Rapid progression to shock despite antibiotic therapy is another indication of necrotizing fasciitis. When necrotizing changes affects the groin it is known as fernier gangrene. However, those who are immunocompromised may not show normal signs and symptoms. Immunocompromised persons also have two-fold higher risk of death from necroticing infections. Therefore, higher suspicion should be maintained in this group. More than 70% of cases are recorded in people with at least one of the following clinical situations, immunosuppression, diabetes, alcoholism slash drug abuse slash smoking, malignancies, and chronic systemic diseases. For reasons that are unclear, it occasionally occurs in people with an apparently normal general condition.
Necrotizing fasciitis can occur at any part of the body but it is more commonly seen at the extremities, perineum, genitals. Only few of such cases arises from chest and abdomen. Trauma is the usual cause of the infection such as intravenous drug injection, insulin injection, animals and insect bites, catheter insertion over the skin, or a fistula connecting skin to the internal body organs. Skin infections such as abscess, ulcers can also complicate into necrotizing fasciitis. Spreading of infection through blood has been suggested for those with streptococcal pharyngitis. For infection of the perineum and genitals, trauma, surgery, urinary tract infection, stones, and Bartholin gland abscess are the usual causes. Types of soft tissue necrotizing infection can be divided into four classes according to the types of bacteria infecting the soft tissue. This classification system was first described by Giuliano and his colleagues in 1977. Type I infection, this is the most common type of infection which accounts for 70-80% to 80 of the cases. It is caused by a mixture of bacterial types, usually in abdominal or groin areas. This type of infection is usually inhabited by various species of gram-positive cocci, gram-negative rods, and anaerobes. Population of those affected are typically older with medical comorbidities such as diabetes mellitus, obesity, and immunodeficiency. Usually, trauma is not the cause of such infections. Previous history of abscess infection gut perforation with bacterial translocation may be elicited. Clostridial infection accounts for 10% of type I infection. Types of Clostridium species involved are, Clostridium perforingens, Clostridium septicum, and Clostridium sordellii. Clostridium species produces two types of deadly toxins, alphatoxin and thetatoxin. Alpha toxins causes excessive platelet aggregation which blocks blood vessels and deprive the vital organs of oxygen supply. This creates an acidic, oxygen-deficient environment for the proliferation of bacteria. When alpha toxin is absorbed by soft tissues, it can inhibit the migration of white blood cells from the blood vessels into the soft tissue, thus impairing phagocyte function. These two toxins together can cause destruction of red blood cells in blood vessels, damages the integrity of the blood vessels and suppress heart function. These species are usually found in the heroin injection users. Those with clostridial infection typically have severe pain at the wound site, where the wound typically drains foul-smelling blood mixing with serum. Shock can progress rapidly after initial hours injury or infection, and once the state of shock is established, the chance of dying exceeds 50%. Another bacteria with similar rapid progression is group A streptococcal infection. Meanwhile, other bacterial infections requires two or more days to become symptomatic. Type 2 infection this infection accounts for 20 to 30 percent of the cases, mainly involving the extremities. This infection mainly involves the Streptococcus pyogenes bacteria or in combination with staphylococcal infections. Both types of bacteria can progress rapidly and manifests as toxic shock syndrome. Streptococcus has M protein which acts as superantigen thus stimulating a massive systemic immune response which is not effective against the bacteria antigen, precipitating shock. Type 2 infection more commonly infects young, healthy adults with history of injury. Type 3 infection, Vibrio vulnificus, a bacterium found in salt water, is a rare cause of this infection. Infection occurs through a break in the skin. 
Disease progression can be as rapid as type 2 infection without any visible skin changes. Type 4 infection Some authors have described the type 4 infection as fungal infection. Early diagnosis is difficult as the disease often looks early on like a simple superficial skin infection. While a number of laboratory and imaging modalities can raise the suspicion for necrotizing fasciitis, the gold standard for diagnosis is a surgical exploration in the setting of high suspicion. When in doubt, a small small incision can be made into the affected tissue, and if a finger easily separates the tissue along the facial plane, the diagnosis is confirmed and an extensive debridement should be performed. Imaging has a limited role in the diagnosis of necrotizing fasciitis. The time delay in performing imaging is a concern. Plain radiography may show subcutaneous emphysema which is strongly suggestive of necrotizing changes, but it is not sensitive enough to detect all the cases. This is because necrotizing skin infections caused by the bacteria other than clostridial infections usually do not show subcutaneous emphysema. If the diagnosis is still in doubt, computed tomography and magnetic resonance imaging are more sensitive modalities than plain radiography. However, both the CT scan and MRI are not sensitive enough rule out necrotizing changes completely. CT scan may show facial thickening, edema, subcutaneous gas, and abscess formation. In MRI when there is fluid collection with deep fascia involvement, thickening, or enhancement with contrast injection, necrotizing fasciitis should be strongly suspected. Meanwhile, ultrasonography can show superficial abscess formation but is not sensitive enough to diagnose necrotizing fasciitis. CT scan is able to detect approximately 80% of cases while MRI may pick up slightly more. A white blood cell count less than 15,000 cells slash mm3 and serum sodium level greater than 135 mol slash L has a sensitivity of 90% in detecting the necrotizing soft tissue infection. It also has 99% chance of ruling out necrotizing changes if the values has shown otherwise. There are various scoring system being developed to determine the likelihood of getting necrotizing fasciitis but a scoring system developed by Wang and colleagues in 2004 is the most commonly used. It is the laboratory risk indicator for necrotizing fasciitis score which can be utilized to risk stratify people having signs of severe cellulitis or abscess to determine the likelihood of necrotizing fasciitis being present. It uses six laboratory values, seriactive protein, total white blood cell count, hemoglobin, sodium, creatinine, and glucose. A score greater than or equal to 6 indicates that necrotizing fasciitis should be seriously considered. The scoring criteria are as follows. However, the scoring system has not been validated. The values would be falsely positive if there is any other inflammatory conditions present. Therefore, the values derived from this scoring system should be interpreted with caution. 10% of patients with necrotizing fasciitis in the original study still had a Rhinox score 25, 2 points.